This is a MacBook late 2007 running Windows 10 64-bit. So what's the big deal, you might ask? Uh, it's a Core 2 Duo 64-bit machine. What's the big fuss? Should be no problem, right? Well, wrong. If you want to run Windows 10 on this particular MacBook and all MacBooks below that too, you're gonna have a hard time. Just forget everything you ever learned about how to install an operating system on a computer because if you come here from Apple land things are a lot different. So what a lot of people don't know is that these machines even though they have 64-bit processors have a 32-bit EFI and it's really only an issue when you want to begin the installation. Now just if, if you were to install Windows on this machine how Apple intends to, then you would have to use Windows 7 32-bit. That's what Apple says is the latest this can run. Not even 64-bit, but 32-bit. This is after all a 64-bit machine, so why does Apple say you can't run a 64-bit operating system on your 64-bit machine? Well, I don't know, but they do and it's really annoying. So what would happen if you tried to install Windows 10 on this machine in the regular fashion that you know? You boot from USB with your USB stick that you created. What would happen? Well, not a whole lot. When you would hold on the option key and choose the USB, it would recognize it, but then you click on it, it would freeze up and that's it. It wouldn't do anything. And for me personally, it didn't matter if I used the 32-bit, Windows 7, Windows 10, it always froze. It just looks to me that these MacBooks really don't like to boot off of USB if you try to install Windows. If you try to install Lion, Mac OS is a completely different story. It works easily without any issues, but if you want to install Windows, you're gonna have a hard time. Now you see lots of tutorials out there who use the refit bootloader or the refined bootloader. And as it turns out, I also had no luck with these. I would install the refit bootloader and select the disk and it would just say something about it cannot be booted from, like a legacy operating system and blah blah, it cannot be booted. That's that's all that happened and I was pissed because yeah it's it's just stupid. <laughs> so another thing I tried is to use a modified Windows 10 installation file that is specifically designed to work with these 32-bit EFI 64-bit Macs. And I had luck once on an iMac 2006, but I booted it from, from not from USB, but from CD, but DVD obviously, it's CD can't fit this big file, but I booted it from a physical disk and it worked. But when I used the same image, just from USB, it again didn't. And not with refit or refine or with the stock bootload or nothing. So I had just no clue how I could boot this thing up and get the Windows installation started. So if you're asking why didn't you try the optical drive then? Well, the optical drive in this computer is dead, so that was also not an option. Even though it's really annoying and it's you're gonna have a hard time, once you kicked off the initial installation, you are good. It will install like on a regular Mac bootcamp, uh, just like basically on a like on a regular PC once you have kicked off this installation. And I did it the following way. So what did I in fact do to get this installation started? I first created a second bootcamp partition, not in the stupid bootcamp utility, which I have never found to be really useful. I just went to the, to the regular good old disk utility and, and created a new partition formatted in MS-DOS, FAT file system. And that's it, that's all I did. And then I tried all the booting processes with USB, with a couple of different USB sticks and had no luck with different images, I told you already, all this, this mess. And so I decided, why don't I take this drive out of the machine 
put it into my Dell here. This is a Dell Optiplex, really old computer, but it worked great for this task. I plugged it into this Dell, started the Windows 10 installation, because even though this machine is just as old, it can easily be booted up from USB because it's just a regular PC without any stupid EFI bullshit. You boot the installation, you start it, you run through the installation, and once it wants to reboot, so the first time it reboots, you let it shut down and you shut it down for good. You don't let it reboot. So you shut it down once it's completed installation for the f like until the first restart. And then you take out the drive here and put it back in the MacBook and select uh, when you hold on the option key again the Windows partition. And then it will continue from there installing the operating system. It's a really bizarre and weird way to install Windows, but it worked. Now I'm really open-minded for different ways of installing it, but this is the only way I have found to get Windows 10 64-bit to install on this MacBook. Now if you reboot this, uh, you have any, like, no evidence at all that it's been through all of this weird mess, because it's going to have the regular boot screen, no third-party bootloader or nothing. It's just stock as you got it from Apple, and it even says boot camp. Now I've had first the fear that the Dell here is maybe going to mess with the Mac OS X partition so that it might screw something up there, because I don't know too much about how this manages to boot alongside with the other Windows partition, but it didn't. Uh, obviously, you have to select the Windows partition and not delete the entire disk. You could, but then the Mac is gone. So as you see, we have Mac OS here and Windows there. And it's no different than your regular boot camp installation. You can boot into Mac still fine, or into Windows, but it's not Windows 7 32-bit like Apple says. This is the best you can run. It can indeed run the latest and greatest Windows 10 64-bit just fine. So Windows 10 was installed but it was still missing drivers. Uh, a couple of actually. The things that worked out of the box were the Wi-Fi, the, all the ports, uh, the trackpad but not properly, um, and the uh, graphics which surprised me. I was really worried about that it might not have a driver since this is a pretty old GMA, the X3100 GMA, CPU-Z recognizes it as a Intel 965 Express chipset, and it's even uh, taking more RAM here than in macOS. In macOS it's taking 144 Max, and here it takes 384 Max, so it's kind of weird. And Windows 10 installed that uh, after updating. Um, as you see, it's, it's running the Microsoft driver, so no worries there. Unfortunately, we still had a couple of devices which did not work, and we also had some question marks in Device Manager. For example, um, the iSight webcam didn't work, um, the keys here didn't work, we of course also had no bootcamp program, no bootcamp utility, so we can choose like boot back into macOS, the only option would be to hold on the option key, no, the only option is holding the option key. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, the sound, yeah, not that it bongs here, the sound also didn't work. And we didn't have, have all of this. So my first attempt was to download the appropriate drivers via the bootcamp utility, let it download the latest software for the machine, and so I put that file on a USB drive and copied it over to Windows, and I went to, into the driver directory, and I installed these following drivers, Apple Bluetooth Enabler, Bluetooth Installer, you can just read it for yourself, that got the Bluetooth working, I installed the iSight driver, I got the iSight working, uh, optical drive installer that didn't really do much, because the optical drive is dead, but I installed it anyway, and I installed the Realtek setup here, which is the sound driver, and so the sound started working as well. So. I had it almost perfectly working, but there were still two uh, critical things that I needed to get working, and that was, first of all, 
the trackpad would not support the touch to click and no right click with two fingers so when you would do you know two fingers here it would not bring up nothing here but now it does and uh, I installed the trackpad driver it didn't do anything and what's worse is there were also no function keys uh, working yet so no brightness control no sound uh, volume control nothing and I researched a bit and I found this one post where they said download the bootcamp version 5.1.5722 which is for an iMac I don't know why but it worked guys so what I did is I went inside the bootcamp folder and drivers folder here and Apple and I ran this but from the command line because here this is the last attempt from Apple to screw you over it's just gonna say oh it's not working on this machine or it's not working on this operating system or whatever um, if you run it from the command line though uh, with this command you can just basically run it and it will not complain so that's weird but it worked this way and it installed and I was a little worried because I had this fear that it might screw up the already existing working stuff. I was pretty happy as it was because I never expected to get that far anyway, but I took the risk and it installed everything. The function key started working, the trackpad click stuff does work, so multi-touch gestures, multi-touch, I don't think it supports gestures yet, but you get the point. Um, we got here the boot camp. Uh, program this this little utility where you can do all these settings and it 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 get it got everything working plus now I even have the bootcamp on here the bootcamp software so this is now basically just a regular bootcamp 64-bit install on this 32-bit EFI MacBook from 2007. Even though Apple says it's not supported, they still have drivers that work for it, um, and that's amazing. So when you do a little tinkering, you can get it fully working. So right now, everything works. The camera works. I can show you that. So yeah, camera is working just fine. Without the driver, it didn't. So it didn't do that out of the box. Also, sleep wake works. Also, didn't work before. When you close it here, close the lid. This will start pulsating, so that means it's in sleep. It's taking a little bit. It's in sleep now. And when you fold it up, it resumes from where you left off. There we are. So yeah, uh, that basically is everything from the installation process and it is a fully functional Windows 10 machine. So you can bring back tons and tons of support with Windows 10 obviously since the latest Mac version you can run on here is version 10.7 which is ancient by now and it's it's kind of funny since you can get the latest iTunes on this machine via Windows just fine but when you go on the Mac side you cannot get that so <laughs> it's crazy but true also you can run the latest office suite and I did use it a little bit and now that brings us to the portion of the video about how it runs and if it's worth it now <laughs> I did use it um, I did do some Skype conferences I did a couple of uh, text documents, I had to type something and I decided, you know what, uh, I'm just gonna type away on this MacBook on Windows 10, keyboard is awesome. And yeah, it, it works, let's just say this way, but it's not ideal. And it comes down to two things in my case. The processor might just be fine, especially for office tasks no biggie but the speed is slow because of two things 
first RAM only 2 gigabytes 330 megahertz RAM that is very little for Windows 10 and yeah well it as you see it does run sorta okay it's definitely not enough if you want to use this as a real daily system so if you would get like two two gigabyte sticks and put it to four should improve things big time yeah so right now it's r running with 1.5 gigs which uh, surprised me that it's actually this efficient with word open and all that so but still pretty maxed out all the time but I think the main reason why this is so sluggish and terrible to use is this elephant in the room here that the hard drive this has a 51 rpm hard drive and if you were to use this for anything productive I would recommend get an SSD bump the RAM up to 4 gigs and you will have a big speed increase but with this 54 RPM crappy hard drive, it's no you know no wonder that it drags it down so much. But if you're fine with typing little documents, doing a little Skype, and maybe looking up a little stuff on the internet, then this could really work out. And on top of that, you are on the latest of everything, so latest Firefox, latest iTunes, latest Office anything you would like you're running an up-to-date Windows so I would say if you can deal with the installation problems and uh, don't expect cutting-edge performance you can really use this this is a real viable option and as you see scrolling works pretty smooth uh, and just look up some some video do that one. You don't have to worry about any security issues since you run the latest of everything. Of course, now we can debate is Windows really a secure operating system in general, but it's different. Yeah, yeah. But you see, you can watch YouTube. There you go, smooth YouTube. It's nothing you can do, for example, on a uh, on a PowerPC Mac, and a couple of bucks more you can get this machine, for example. So, yeah, if you're into really, really cheap Macs, this is a good option, I guess. Um, but yeah, basically, I mean, there's not a lot I have to say. It's obviously a machine from 2007. It's old, old processor, old everything. So, the, the the actual performance, the overall performance is not gonna be the, the best but it surprises me though how well it runs considering its age that it's not if even officially supported and that it's actually a, just a ghetto slap together MacBook you can watch the funny video I made um, and uh, it runs fine, reliable nothing wrong with it other than it's spinning the fan all the time, which uh, can get a little bit on your nerves. But if you can ignore that, it's it's fine. So, this is my little video about the MacBook, late 2007, running Windows 10 64-bit. It's definitely worth it. If you are looking for a better option than Windows, because Windows is kind of bloated, there's always Linux. So. No worries, do not throw away this old MacBook just because Apple says you can only run 10.7 in Windows 7. Don't throw it away. Try out Windows 10, try out maybe Ubuntu or something. Or if you feel like a total hacker, you can try a later Mac OS. But from experience, I can tell you it's a pain in the ass and definitely not worth it. It's a lot of wasted time and... Um, that's due to the graphics card so I'd even say Windows 10 is a better option in this case alright hope you liked it see you later